Chief, and now each member will have five minutes to ask questions. I want to start with you, if you don't mind, Chief Williams. Thank you. In the Buffalo situation at the supermarket, there was a retired policeman who was a security guard. Yes, sir. And when the shooter came in with his AR-15 and started shooting randomly the customers in the store, he pulled out his handgun and he was gunned down by this AR-15 as well. Yes, he was clearly outgunned uh, at that scene. That is not an uncommon experience that many of the police that we count on around this country are being outgunned by the shooters. Is there a response that you would think could make it safer for the police that you represent? So thank you, Chairman Durbin, for that question. Uh, we are outgunned. We're outgunned. We're outmanned. We're outstaffed. Um, we do need responsible gun legislation. We do believe that there should be a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in order for us to properly serve our, and protect our community. Dr. Uh, Salaji, you heard Mr. Willingham tell the story of growing up in Chicago and what he's been through and what he's witnessed and what he hears from his friends. Can you tell me a little bit, I think that would fit into the adverse childhood experience for sure, the trauma situation. Can you tell me, it, I'm trying to look for a hopeful sign here. He's come forward and made, has made quite a great uh, contribution in his own life toward his college education and his aspirations. What are the hopes of rescuing young people like him who have been exposed to this trauma as they're growing up? Thank you so much for that question, Senator Durbin. And I really like to thank Ernest Willingham for his testimony. He represents so many of the youth that I take care of. I've, I've been a foster care um, child welfare pediatrician for over 30 years. And one can't do that work without seeing trauma every day, everywhere I look. Um, I do think there's been a pervasive sense of hopelessness um, among our youth, and that's partly why we're seeing such an increase in youth suicide and youth violence. But you asked about adverse childhood experiences and childhood trauma. And so the studies were done a long time ago now, but they have continued and they've reinforced what we know, that children who have high level, levels of exposure to adversity, particularly intrafamilial adversity, or stressors outside the family, such as discrimination, bullying, and community violence, have high rates of lifelong mental health, health, and, and poor social outcomes. But we also know that young people who grow up in such environments can also do well, but they do well because they have a lot of resources poured into them. So the hopeful part are the families, having a good family, as it sounds like Mr. Willingham um, really had, um, finding teachers and educators who support you. I actually grew up in a rough and tough neighborhood, and I was blessed to have a wonderful family. And um, several of my friends died by suicide while I was growing up, and um, I also had um, a friend of my brother's was shot in my home by his cousin. So I've seen violence in my personal life. The hope comes that we know what we need to do to fix things. Um, and in particular about adverse childhood experiences, it is identifying these children early. It is pouring resources um, into them, and a lot of that has to do with the relationships we, we surround them with. We need evidence-based trauma-informed mental health care, and I deeply appreciate the work that you have been doing to pass legislation on um, increasing mental health supports and addressing trauma-informed care. Um, and I do think that there is hope. I have certainly seen the young people I know in foster care. I, they have ranged from kids saying to me, I don't expect to live past 20. Many of them probably grew up in neighborhoods similar to Mr. Willingham's. Um, but I've also seen the young people from similar circumstances with the right inputs do very, very well, like Mr. Willingham going on to college and planning their future. So yes, there is hope. Thank, Thank you, you, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Willingham, I, I wish I had more time because I'd, I'd like for you to explain with all your friends and yourself going through a lifetime exposed to this gun violence and uncertainty and um, despair in some situations, how you ended up weathering that storm and are moving in the right direction. Could you say it in a few words? I'm sorry I don't have more time. Thank you, Chairman Durbin, for that question. Um, 
It's as simple as stating, as Dr. Moore explained, having a village, it takes really a village to pour into one child. Um, and having a team of people, a good family, um, teachers, mentors, all of those different things matter. Um, there are, and I'm not the only one in my neighborhood doing great things. I'm not the only young person in Chicago that has excelled throughout um, difficult times in their lives. But the reason so many of us have been able to excel in the midst of um, controversy in the midst of gun violence, in the midst of just a difficult upbringing is because of the village, because where you have a village to um, help you navigate through high school, help you navigate through college and possible career things, and also just that social and emotional um, counseling and therapy that you get, and not necessarily from a mental health professional, from someone, a community health worker or um, an educator in the school or someone at your neighborhood corner store. It, it literally takes a village to um, really navigate a child through difficult circumstances. I've so heard, that's what I can attest to my story. I've heard that phrase before. Thank you very much, Mr. Willingham. Senator Grassley. Uh, Max, you've dedicated your life